Today we want to continue our video series about the life of Ferdinand Porsche. In part 1 we learned all about his childhood, his family background and his fascination for electricity, which got him a job at Bela Egger's company VEAG in Vienna. At the same time we have to talk about Ludwig Lohner. Ludwig Lohner was born in 1858 and was the son of the famous Austrian coach builder Jakob Lohner. Ludwig studied mechanical engineering and did internships at coach builders in Paris, London and New York before he took over his father's company in 1893. For him, it was clear that cars are the future and so he traveled through Europe in summer 1896 to see where he can get the best engine. Because after all, he was already building coaches and just needed an engine. His conclusion was that Daimler had the best engines but his attempt to reach a license agreement with them failed. He then secured a deal with the French engine supplier Lefebvre Vessart, but these engines had cooling issues and constantly failed. Another project to use a diesel engine in his car together with MAN in Germany failed as well. And so he decided to build an electric car, but not alone, with the help of electricity expert VEAG. And their head engineer was the young Ferdinand Porsche. The first version was not very convincing, but the second one, the C2, was a success. Porsche already used an electric motor on his bicycle to get to work quicker and so they built a bigger version and drove the wheel wheels and fit a large battery in the middle. Already now, Lona was planning for different body options. An open Mylord body for 7750 mark, a closed coupé body for 8100 mark and an interchangeable body for 9000 mark. The weight of the car was, depending on the body, 1450 kg, where the battery was one third of the total weight. The electric motor was 130 kg and delivered 3 horsepower. There were 6 power levels to go forward and 2 to go backwards. For lower power levels, they didn't use all the battery cells. A huge problem at these early cars were drivetrain losses. Shafts didn't have bearings and needed to be greased intensively and frequently, so pretty often cars failed during races with stuck drivetrains. And even in everyday life, cars lost 40 to 60 percent of their power in the drivetrain until it reached the wheels. So Porsche tried to avoid shafts in his design as much as possible, for a higher efficiency and hence higher range. You can see how the transversal electric motor drives the large gear on the rear wheel directly without any shaft or chain. The car was presented at the Berlin Auto Show in 1899 and there they did a race between six manufacturers. The Egger Lona car won. So things were going well for Porsche. Also privately. He got to know the company's secretary Aloysia Case better and she became his girlfriend. She was the daughter of a tailor from Vienna, but her family came originally from Bohemia, just like Porsche. At the same time, Ernst Egger, son of Porsche's boss Bela Egger, stole Porsche's drawings for his electric motor and filed a patent himself. Secretary and Porsche girlfriend Aloysia of course witnessed what was happening within the company and wrote a statement describing that Porsche complained to Bela Egger, but he supported his son and both Eggers were seen very happily celebrating. She was furious about this injustice, but Porsche comforted her by saying, don't worry, I already have better ideas. So Porsche no longer wanted to work for Egger and joined their customer Ludwig Lohner in 1899 with his idea for an electric wheel hub motor. He was 24 years old at this point. Within 10 weeks he designed the wheel hub electric motor and created the first Lohner Porsche car. Interesting here is now that Porsche is always named separately. The reason for an electric wheel hub motor was clear. The wheel is the motor and doesn't need any shaft or gears anymore, so it provided maximum efficiency. But these early electric motors had an efficiency of only 80%, which means they still turned 20% into heat and got hot while driving as well. So Porsche positioned them at the front axle for better cooling. The rotation of the engine helped cooling additionally. Other advantages of front-wheel drive were the more stable driving characteristics since they advertised this car to be able to drive quickly through tight turns even on wet surfaces without spinning. And because the driven wheels could be steered, you could also get through mud a bit easier, which was important because they didn't have that good roads yet. 
So the first newspapers reported about this first Lona Porsche car in February 1900. Porsche first only had a pattern for it in Hungary and France, but not in Austria, Germany and USA. So the newspapers didn't show too many details yet. The electric wheel hub motors provided 2.5 horsepower in normal conditions, up to 3.5 horsepower constantly and 7 horsepower for short time. The car had a weight of 980 kg, so it was much lighter than the previous Egalona, but now the battery had with 44 cells and 410 kg almost half of the weight. One wheel hub motor had a weight of 115 kg and despite the weight could be changed easily in 5 minutes. Another innovation was that the car had 4 brakes. The front wheels could be braked with electric motors and the rear wheels with mechanical brakes. If you put the switch for the electric drive on off, it would automatically apply the mechanical rear brakes for an even brake distribution. Additionally, although the car barely reached 40 km per hour, it already had an aero cover for the legs of the passengers. Porsche designs were always a few steps ahead. The ground clearance was with 425mm pretty low for this time and provided a low center of gravity for better handling. While the previous Ega Lona had a range of around 65 km, the Lona Porsche could reach up to 100 km per charge. But already in February 1900, Porsche stated that this is not enough for them. They soon want to introduce a combustion range extender to reach 150 km. The car was presented at the Paris Exposition in April 1900, and it caught lots of attention and won a gold medal for the most impressive electric car design. Lona was one of the oldest coach manufacturers, but since they worked with Porsche, they were constantly in the car news because there was something new every few months. When asked about his engineer Porsche, Lona said in Paris, he is a brilliant young man who has a great career ahead of him. You will hear a lot about him in the future. His name is Ferdinand Porsche. Again, Lona and Porsche were planning the new cars as a platform for many other vehicles which was easy to do with wheel hub motors and a flat battery underneath. Porsche designed a race version of the Lona Porsche. He extended the battery to 74 cells, kept the same front wheel hub motors and gave it a more aerodynamic shape. They participated at Austria's biggest motorsport event, the Semmering race on 9th of September 1900. It's a very steep climb of 400 meters and 10 kilometer length. Porsche could beat the current record during practice already by quite some margin. In the race, he could cover 5.5 kilometers, so more than half, in just 6 minutes, while the current overall record was held with a motorcycle with 14 minutes 38 seconds. But then, Porsche's front tires gave up. The high weight on the front wheels, plus driving, braking and cornering forces, were too much. Porsche still tried to continue driving on the front rims, but they were just spinning and he had to give up. So tire management was already a huge topic for Porsche. But Lona and Porsche wanted to show what their car was capable of. So they registered with the Austrian Automobile Club for a record drive on 23rd of September 1900, so just two weeks later. At 6 in the morning, Porsche started on his self-designed electric car at Heavy Fog. He reached the finish at 14 minutes and 52 seconds. So because of the foggy conditions he didn't beat the overall record, but he was a lot faster than all cars at the race two weeks earlier. His average speed was 40 km per hour on this steep track at heavy head wind. At the same time, Porsche and Lona presented the Zempa Vivos. As announced earlier in the year, they added a mobile charging station to their race car for more range, more power and almost the same weight. Just like the electric version, it had a simple frame with two longitudinal tubes and the known 2.5 horsepower front electric wheel hub motors. In the race, they provided up to 7 horsepower each, so 14 in total. To protect the sensitive technology from hard bumps, they suspended battery, range extender and seats with coil springs. The battery was reduced to 44 cells again and a fuel tank, a cooling system and the two range extenders were added. These were two Dédillon Bouton combustion engines with a power of 3.5 horsepower each. They were running independently and each one was coupled to a generator which drove the front wheels directly. All leftover energy was stored in the battery, 
which supported the range extenders at steep climbs. Again, with this design, Porsche avoided any shafts to keep the efficiency high. The battery electric version had a total weight of 1130 kg. The range extender version had the smaller 410 kg battery but added 270 kg for combustion engines and 100 kg for fuel tank and cooling system, which resulted in a total weight of 1200 kg. But Porsche developed in every direction. Just three weeks later it was announced that the British Automobile Club would be holding trials of electric cars between 5th and 9th of November 1900 in the south of London. Ernest Hart, businessman and car enthusiast from Luton, contacted Lona and asked to build a race car for him. Lona and Porsche used their platform and created a massive electric car. And the organizers didn't disclose where the starting point and how long the track would be. Requirement was to complete the track without recharging. So Porsche put a huge double stack battery with a weight of 1800 kg in the middle and suspended it again with coil springs to the frame. He then used his proven wheel hub motors with up to 7 horsepower, one on each wheel, which added almost another 500 kg. So he created an electric car with all wheel drive and that in record time. They designed, built and shipped the monster to Britain in just three weeks. Starting point and headquarter of the event was the Bull's Head Hotel in Shizzlehurst, which still looks the same today. It was chosen because the Shizzlehurst electric light station was just 200 meters from there and the electric cars could be charged there overnight. Of course, the British weather was not very inviting in November and heavy rain delayed the start for 24 hours. Only 7 of the registered 13 cars started the race while 2 joined later. The Luna Porsche was by far the heaviest car and that was their big problem. The power advantage suffered under the high weight and even more, again, the tires. They had many tire failures, issues with fused wiring and could barely cover the required distance of 34 miles on the first day. So they withdrew the car from the rest of the event and saved it for an unofficial run on the last day. But it didn't come to that because also driver Porsche didn't cope well with the British weather and had a bad cold. Back in Austria, Porsche knew he had to develop in the other direction. Lower the weight and best case, getting rid of the battery. And that's what he did in the following winter months. So just to underline that, in 1900 Porsche was a pioneer with front wheel drive, all wheel drive, electric drivetrain, wheel hub motors and mid-engined range extenders. His next project was the so-called Mixte. So he took a 5.5 liter four-cylinder combustion engine with 28 horsepower designed by Paul Daimler at Austro Daimler which was located just around the corner. He placed a decent radiator at the front to avoid any cooling issues and also placed his proven wheel hub motors at the front axle again. Only two to save weight and at the front for better cooling. And he coupled a large generator on the crankshaft of the engine, which powered the wheel hub motors directly. Leftover power and regenerative braking energy was turned into heat with coils underneath the car. So the engine was running at constant speed and could be fine-tuned for that for lower consumption and hence a smaller and lighter fuel tank. Again, he avoided any shafts, which would reduce efficiency. And now he eliminated the big heavy problem, the battery. Emil Jelinek, businessman, car enthusiast, car investor and with a daughter called Mercedes, financed Porsche's mixed project and bought seven cars. He was always looking for the latest trends in car industry and was traditionally driving Daimler cars in races and called them like his daughter, Mercedes. He constantly suggested new designs to Daimler and annoyed them with harsh feedback when their cars broke down in a race. So he had direct contact to the Daimler management in Germany and Austria. Anyway, Porsche and Lona now had the funds to develop their latest project, the Mixte. Porsche participated at the Austrian Exelberg Hildlime race in May 1901 with his new design. It was an early prototype and didn't look complete, but it was destroying the competition of combustion, steam and electric cars. Porsche in his mixed hybrid car stormed up the hill in just 5 minutes 39 seconds while the current record from a motorcycle was 6 minutes 24. So he was almost 1 minute faster on a relatively short but steep track. 
Again, he showed what the front wheel drive is capable of. He developed the car further to a proper road car. And for a long range test drive in 1902, he chose to visit his parents in Mathersdorf, more than 400 kilometers away, and took his girlfriend Aloysia with him to meet the family and to announce that this is his future wife, although his parents still had other plans. Porsche drove his father and brother Oscar around in the futuristic hybrid car. In 1903, Porsche married his girlfriend Aloysia Kees, and a year later, in 1904, their daughter Luise Porsche was born in Vienna. In the meantime, Lona sold patents to Panat and Levasor in 1902, and they started production in 1903. In 1905, Emil Jelinek's exclusive contract with Daimler was running out, and he was interested in Lona Porsche hybrid cars. He founded multiple companies with his partners Daimler and Deutsche Bank and offered a deal to Lona. Because Jelinek's offer was better, Lona and Porsche dissolved the contract with Panat and Levasor in 1905. And Jelinek planned to build the new vehicles at Austro Daimler. Technical director here was Paul Daimler, son of founder Gottlieb Daimler, and he was called back to Daimler's German headquarter in Stuttgart. So they needed a new technical director for Austro Daimler to produce the Porsche designs. Jelinek knew that the best person for the job would be the young Ferdinand Porsche himself, who just got into a lawsuit with his boss and partner Lona over the wheel hub motor patent at that time, so it was a good opportunity to leave. In the end, they sold around 300 Lona Porsche cars and an era came to an end. Porsche left Lona for Austro Daimler in 1906 and took the patents with him. The electric wheel hub motor car production stopped at Lona and they focused on the upcoming aircraft industry. For Porsche, now at Austro Daimler, a new chapter of amazing achievements began. Learn more about that in the next part and if you want to support the channel for more videos like this and early access, feel free to become a B-Sport Club member. See you at the next one.